Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's very nice to see you all here. I would like to call upon our guest, our guest who comes all the way from Australia to join us. And uh, inshallah, he will join us in a few moments up on the stage. His name is Sheikh Tawfiq Chaudhry. And uh, he is CEO and founder of Mercy Mission World and also the chairman of Al Kawthar Institute. And inshallah, he comes here today and uh, he will speak about a very, very important, important topic, a journey that we will all be taking. And it's a must for us to take. And uh, it's a very, very powerful, very emotional topic. And inshallah, without further ado, I would like to call upon Sheikh Tawfiq Chaudhary. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam abarak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, I am a medical doctor. I work in the emergency department. And I'll tell you what, I deal with death every single day. I deal with the fact that people are dying. I try and I battle with the best of the skills that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught me against the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try and save a human being. And believe me, a lot of the times I'm not successful and at other times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help comes through and alhamdulillah with some mercy and some forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this person, we end up saving a person's life. But there's one thing I can guarantee you, I have never ever in my life as a medical doctor seen something called a good death. I've never seen someone who has simply very peacefully passed away. I've never seen that. I've seen people struggle. I've seen people fight. I've seen people wanting to live longer. I've never seen anyone that says, okay, you know what, I'm ready. Just give it to me. Take my soul away now. I'm ready for it. I've never ever seen a person that is actually ever ready for death. And I began to think, why is it that people are never ready for death? Ask yourself right now, if this next salah that you're about to pray will be your last salah. And you know, just like a person on the death row, for example, who knows that he's about to be slaughtered or he's about to be hanged. Imagine if you knew that your next salah, your, your Isha prayer was your last prayer, and then thereafter you would die soon after. Why is it that there is no one amongst us who is ready for death? Well, one of the scholars of Islam, Ibrahim al-Harbi rahimahullah, was asked this question. Saying, Ya Ibrahim, why is it that no one is ever ready for death? Do you know what he said? He said, لِأَنَّكُمْ عَمَّرْتُمْ دُنْيَاكُمْ وَخَرَّبْتُمْ أُخْرَاكُمْ Do you know why we hate talking about death? Do you know why we're never ready for death? Do you know why it is that we are always afraid when we talk about death? Because we have built this dunya for us. We built our palaces, we built our houses, our homes, our beautiful places of dwelling, but we have destroyed our hereafter. We've looked after our dunya, but we have destroyed our hereafter. Ammartum dunyakum wa kharraptum ukhraakum. Because we have nothing to really look forward to. And this is the real problem, ya ikhwati. If we are going to focus so much of our time, our life, our money, our wealth, our skills, every single time, every single thing, if we are going to focus all of this on the dunya, what is it that we have left for the akhirah? What is it that we are going to prepare for the Akhirah? It is for this reason, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, why our Prophet wasallam and the companions of Rasulullah were very different from us. They were a people who did not fear death. We are a people who fear death. And the difference between the two is that they worked only for the Akhirah, whereas we seem to work only for the dunya. Al-Hassan al-Basri, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. He said, O oh, ayyuha shabab, O oh, young men and young women, work for the Akhirah. For indeed, I have found in my life that anyone who works for the Akhirah, also Allah gives him the dunya. But I have never ever found in my life that anyone who works for the dunya gets any piece of the Akhirah. My brothers and sisters of Islam, the death is going to come to us. It is written for us. There is no escape from it. And by Allah, it is the most certain thing that will happen to us. Death. There is not a single person that will escape it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَإِن مِتَّ فَهُمُ الْخَالِدُونَ 
Ya Rasulullah Wasallam, if you were to die, do they think that they will live forever? Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut. There is not a single soul except that it will taste death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us again and He tells us, أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُ Wherever you are, يُدْرِكُمُ maut. Death will reach you. وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدَ Even if you were in a huge, beautiful, fortified castle, death will reach you. So my brother and sister in Islam, there is simply no escape from it. There is not a single person except that we will face death. If our Prophet some died, the one who had every right to live forever, then indeed we will all pass away one day. And the question is, are we truly preparing for it? Don't ask about the last hour. Don't ask about death. Rather ask, what have you prepared for it? My brothers and my sisters in Islam, Rasulullah told us an authentic hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi. He said, إِنَّ لِلْمَوْتِ لَسَقَرَاتُ وَإِنَّ لِلْمَوْتِ لَغَمَرَاتُ What does it mean? It means verily death has its trials. Verily death has its torture and pains. There is no single person who simply has an easy death. Unless you're going in a, in a car and you're going at 100k an hour and suddenly you get crushed and smashed and that's it, you're dead. You know, in one minute you're finished. But even that only Allah knows how much difficulty a person goes through. How much pain and suffering a person goes through. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was passing away, he used to dip his hands into the water, in the bucket, and he used to wipe his hands. And he used to dip his hands, and then wipe his face. And dip his hands, and wipe his face. And he used to say, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. Inna lil mawti la ghamarat, wa inna lil mawti la sakarat. Verily death has its pains and trials. Verily death has its torture. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, truly death is very difficult. And very trial, very testing, and very troublesome. It is reported once in the authentic hadith of Rasulullah wasallam, And it's a Hassan hadith, that at the time of death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us at the exact moment as our soul is about to leave us. In the narration we understand that the shaitan will sit on our forehead at the moment of our death and ask us to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine when you have a tremendous pain in your chest, when your breath is leaving you, when your head is whirling and you cannot even think, at that moment when shaitan sits on your forehead and says, Ukfur billah, disbelieve in Allah, how will you have the strength and the energy to reply back? You will not have the strength and energy to reply back and be firm upon your deen and have no doubts about Allah Azawajal unless you lived a life full of Islam and Iman. Unless you lived a life full of taqwa and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have you ever noticed sometimes when something suddenly happens to you and then suddenly a word of swear or a bad word comes out and you suddenly hold your mouth and say, SubhanAllah, what happened? How could I swear? Do you know what the problem is? The problem is we have not conditioned our internal being, our internal selves into making dhikr of Allah whenever we have less control over our body. And subhanallah, this is the real problem. If we do not condition ourselves in this dunya with the remembrance of Allah, of la ilaha illallah, of dhikr of Allah azawajal, at the moment of death, when the most serious trial begins, we will unfortunately fail that test. It was reported when the death of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah came, his son Abdullah bin Imam Ahmed entered upon his father, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, and found his father in the throngs of death at the last point of him passing away. At that point, Imam Ahmed's son Abdullah said to his father, saying, Oh my father, say La ilaha illallah. This is the dream of every Muslim, isn't it? That we will say La ilaha illallah at the point of our death, and then we will die. So at that point, Abdullah bin Imam Ahmed, he said, he said, what? Oh my father, say la ilaha illallah. What actually happened at that point? Imam Ahmed nodded his head like this. So Abdullah became really worried. He said, my father, did you hear me? Say la ilaha illallah. Imam Ahmed went like this. So again, again Abdullah said, Oh my father, shook Imam Ahmed like this. And said, say la ilaha illallah. And Imam Ahmed nodded his head like this, saying no. And then he said strongly, no. So Abdullah started to cry, thinking that his father was about to die as a disbeliever. 
because his father was nodding his head saying no. Can you imagine this? This is authentically reported in the story of Imam Ahmed rahimullah in Al-Dhahabi Seer Alam Al-Nubula. At that point, Imam Ahmed saw his son crying and said, Oh Abdullah, Oh Abdullah, let me tell you, I was not speaking to you. I was not replying to you. Don't be sad. Listen to what happened. A little while ago, just as you were about to speak to me, I saw a devil sitting on my forehead. And he was telling me, Oh Ahmed, Ukfur Billah. Disbelieve in Allah. And I said no to him. Then he told me again, Disbelieve in Allah. And I said no to him. And then he said again, Say I am your Lord. I am your Lord. Meaning the shaitan is saying, I am your Lord. And at that point I said no. And you thought I was replying to you. Ya ikhwati, there are numerous reports from the Salihin that the shaitan will test us at the moment of our death. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us, فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Ya yeah, ikhwati, this is the verse that comes to me every single time I get the code blue in the hospital. فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ When the soul has reached the throat. وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ And you are looking and you are seeing the person dying. Right? وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْسِرُونَ and my angels have come, and the angels are already close to the soul, about to grab the soul, whilst you cannot even see them. فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ And if you are not therefore obliged to follow this religion, and follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to do, and what the Prophet told you to do. تَرْجِعُونَهَا Return it back into the body. The promise of Allah, the challenge of Allah, that if indeed we will live forever, if indeed, we can continue on the way that we are, then return back the soul into the body if indeed you're truthful. My brothers and sisters in Islam, death comes to people of all ages. Death comes to people of all ages. Just the last few weeks, when I was in hospital before I came to Pakistan, three or four people died, and by Allah, they were not all people. A, a child of six months died in front of me. A boy of 31 years old died. Another woman, 28 years old, smashed up by a car. Another one, 44 years old, pregnant lady, her and her baby died in front of me. Yahwati, death comes to everyone, at any time, at any situation. Do not ever think, but Allah, it will not come to you. It will come to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us that we will die. And the Prophet ﷺ told us about the grave. He said, one day he came out, and he went past the grave and he saw the adab of the qabr and he started to cry and cry. And he came out to the sahaba whilst his eyes were red. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya ayyuha shabab, O people, O young men, women, O sahaba, لِمِثْلِ ذَلِكَ فَاسْتَعِدُّوا For the example of this, prepare yourselves. For the example of the grave, prepare yourselves. He said in authentic hadith, Wallahi, if you could hear what I hear, you would not find pleasure in sleeping with your wives. Wallahi, if you knew what I knew, you would never bury your dead. Another authentic hadith. Ya Salam. The punishment of the grave is a terrible punishment. It is authentically reported from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that people will be punished in their graves. Authentic hadith of Rasulullah ﷺ about a person who learns the Qur'an and then forgets the Qur'an, is that that person will be put down on the ground and a big boulder will be used to smash his head. Authentically reported, a person who takes riba and eats riba and gives riba will be swimming in a pool of blood. And every single time he tries to get out of that pool of blood, an angel will be taking a stone and throwing it at him until the stone will hit him in the face and he will go and drown into the pool of blood. And that will continue till the day of judgment. Authentically reported that the person who spreads namima, especially our brothers and sisters who love to sit together and talk about others, that they will be made to lay down on the ground and an angel will be used to tear open the sides of this mouth from one side to the other side and this will continue till the day of judgment. Authentically reported also that the people who used to commit zina in this dunya will be burnt in their graves as if it's a furnace 
the people will be naked and they will be burnt in their furnace, in their graves, as if it was a oven. And this is the punishment of the people who committed zina in this dunya. And there's no one amongst us, as the Prophet said, there's no one amongst my ummah except that a nisbah of zina has been written for him or her. No one amongst us here except that we will commit an amount of zina with our hands or our eyes or our tongues or our legs or with our hearts or with our private parts. Ya salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us and save us from this. Ya ikhwati, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said the qabr is the awwalu manabil akhirah. Qabr is the entry point into the akhirah. Imagine the first day you are going to get married. How amazing is that day? Beautiful bed, full of rose petals, such excitement on that day. Compare the night of your marriage to the night that you will enter the grave. The first night of entry into the grave is a terrible day. It's a day that you are not expecting. It's a day that you are hoping for the best, but perhaps the worst might overtake you. The first night in the grave is not a bed of petals, it is a cold earth. It is a wet, cold earth, completely dark, completely black. And as you die, and as your soul is lifted up towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wrapped up in a garment of good, or wrapped up in a bad smelling garment, and you go up to the heavens, at that point your hukum will be passed upon you. Whether you are going to go to Jannah, or you're going to go to Jahannam. Your names will be written in the books of the good people or in the books of the bad people. And as your body is buried, and as the people start to leave, your soul comes down into your body. And at that point, as Rasulullah told us, two angels will come to us. It is not authentically reported whether the names are Munkar and Nakir or not. It is not authentic to call them Munkar and Nakir. But we know that there will be two angels. And what we know authentically is that they will be black in appearance that their voices will be like thunder, their eyes will be red, and when they blink, it is like lightning that will strike inside your graves. And the fitna of the questioning of the angels will be extremely severe. In the authentic hadith in Bukhari, it is reported that Rasulullah said, أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّكُمْ سَتُفْتَنُونَ فِي قُبُورِكُمْ قَرِيبٌ أَوْ مِثْلَ قَرِيبٍ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَسِيحَ الدَّجَّالِ He said, what? It has been authentically reported to me that you will all be tested in your graves. Similar to or almost the test of the Dajjal. Imagine the test of the Dajjal. It's the test that all our prophets have told us to be wary of, to be very careful of. To be wary of the Dajjal, because it is a severe test. The Dajjal will come to us, and the test of the Dajjal is so great that there is not a single prophet except... That, that Prophet has warned us against the Dajjal. Imagine that no one amongst us, whether we meet the Dajjal whilst we're alive or not, except that the fitna, the similar fitna of the test of the Dajjal will be met to us on the day that we die. Ya khwati, it's a very difficult situation. The grave is not something that we're all looking forward to. Uthman radiallahu anhu used to say, I don't worry about the Akhirah, about Jahannam. My biggest worry is the grave. Because that is the point at which I will know whether I'm going to Jahannam or not. And that is the first point of my entry into the Akhirah. You see, we don't have to wait for the day of judgment. We know that our day of judgment will begin the day that we die. And by Allah, that point could be as soon as the very next hour after now. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, Allah have mercy on me and you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all that is to come. I'm giving you a grim picture because by Allah, that is precisely the test that we are all about to face. Death is not pleasant. And the test that we are going to come about is not pleasant. And we must prepare for a very, very difficult test. The Prophet told us that indeed when we enter into our graves, either one of two things will happen. When we pass the test of the angels, and the three questions will be asked to us. Man rabbuk, and of course, what's your religion? This man that came to amongst you, the three questions. When we answer them, either one of two things will happen. Either we answer successfully, we pass the test. Or we don't pass the test, and so a punishment is meted to us straight away. We are hit by a stick through which we will scream, and everything of creation will hear our scream except for 
human beings and jinn. Or as soon as we say our answer, our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply back that my slave has spoken the truth and our graves will be made very, very wide. Huge and wide. And of course, a beautiful window will be open from which we will see our place in Jannah. Another window will be open from which we will see our place in Jahannam had we actually been bad. So that we actually appreciate the beautiful differences that we will have if we are actually good. Then we will have a beautiful person sitting with us. And that is our good deeds. And then a night will come to us. And that is our prayer. And then another night will come to us. And that is the Quran. And another night will come to us. That is our fasting. Our good deeds will come to us in the form of nights protecting us in our graves from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, if we were not good, then Allah, Allah alayk, because the terrible time that we will have in the grave where we have nothing to help us. La mal wa la banun. No children and no wealth. On top of that, it is authentically reported from many of the Sahaba that they used to say, mawkufan, mawkufan meaning it only ends at the Sahaba. Though they would not have said this unless they heard this from Rasulullah It is authentically reported from the Sahaba that Whilst we are in our graves, we will be told by the angels about what happens on this earth. Especially what happens to our families on this earth. Okay? So many of the Sahaba told us that we will be told by the angels what happens to our families on this earth. So if you leave behind righteous people, and your children are good and righteous, they read the Quran, they pray, they fast, and you make sure that they were good upon this deen. Then the angels will come to you and tell you about how your son is now, mashallah, giving a lecture, he's leading the salah here, he's doing this good, he just built a masjid in your name, he's building an orphanage in your name, subhanallah. So much khair, so much good upon good. How beautiful would that be? But imagine if your children were bad, and if you did not teach them about Islam, and you left them upon kufr and shirk, and all you gave them was playstations and an education in a Christian school and you send them off to America or USA, where they learned nothing but haram, and they saw pornography at night, and they fell into drinking, and they did haram things, imagine what answer they will tell you in your graves. Musibah. And the problem is, you'll be screaming and trying to get out of your grave, but you cannot. Umar radiallahu anhu asked Rasulullah Ya Rasulullah, will we have our intelligence in our grave? You know, intelligence that like we can think now, right? Our ability to think and ponder. Will we have our sense and our intelligence in our grave? Rasulullah said, yes. You will have your intelligence and your understanding and logic in your grave. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in the grave, being able to think about the time we spent in this dunya? And what we did? Ya salam. What an amazing thing that would be. Ya ikhwati, whilst we're in the belly of the grave, Many years will pass by. The people who have died in the Battle of Badr, 1400 years, people have died. Subhanallah, how many hundreds of years? You might have your own parents that have passed away. Perhaps brothers and sisters. How many years, subhanallah, are they in the belly of the grave? So many things will be happening on the top of the grave whilst the people are unaware. What's happening? The Mahdi would have come. And after the Mahdi, then the Dajjal would have come. After the Dajjal, then Isa والسلام, would have come. And after Isa والسلام, then comes the Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And then Isa والسلام, makes dua against the Ya'juj and Ma'juj and they die off. Then Isa والسلام, dies. And then thereafter people are upon Tawheed until unfortunately they start to all go down. And Islam starts to be lost again from the lives of the people. And then of course the ten great signs happen. And that is in the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, the ten great signs that will take place on the day of judgment. Of them is the Dajjal. Of them is the is Isa salam. Of them is the sun rising from the west. Of them is the fact that there will be three major earthquakes. And these earthquakes are like landslides. And basically the scholars of Islam describe them to be continental landslides. Where, where huge continents will be torn apart. One in the east, one in the west, and one in the middle east. Huge continents will tear apart. And you can imagine the destruction when huge land masses as big as a continent are torn apart from each other. You can imagine the destruction that will happen. We also know of the black 
beast that will come out of the Kaaba. It will brand everyone. We also know of the smoke that will come from Yemen. A huge smoke that will come, perhaps a super volcano from Yemen that will come and that will explode and it will completely obliterate all life in this dunya. These are some of the signs that will happen on the day of judgment. The 10 major signs followed by of course the 60 minor signs that have yet to happen still. And then these things are happening whilst you are still in the belly of the grave. Imagine the angels coming one by one and telling you what's happening in the belly of the grave. Subhanallah. How amazing would that be? And inshallah ta'ala you are in blessings and na'im, not in difficulty and punishment. Having the sleep of pers- of a someone who has simply just gotten married. And then suddenly you hear something very strange. What do you hear? You hear a terrible sound. What is that sound? It is the blowing of the horn. It is the day of judgment starting to begin. The scholars of the ummah of Muhammad Wasallam have differed on to how many times the horn will be blown into. And the stronger opinion inshallah is that the horn will be blown into three times. Some said two. The stronger opinion is that it will be blown into three times. What is the horn? The horn is a qarn, is like the horns of a ram that has been hollowed out. And it, this is a horn that is carried by an angel by the name of Israfil. Israfil is an amazing angel. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once got up in the middle of the night suddenly. Like someone has a bad dream and you wake up suddenly, almost gasping for air. In this manner, the Prophet got up. When he got up in this manner, he woke up Aisha radiallahu anha as well. So Aisha radiallahu anha saw Rasulullah getting up in this very excited, very dazed manner. And when he saw Rasulullah in this manner, asked, Ya Rasulullah, what's wrong? What's wrong? Rest and be peaceful, Ya Rasulullah, what's happened? Rasulullah replied to her and said, Kayfa an'am? How can I rest? How can I rest when the Sahib al Sur, when the Sahib al Sur, meaning the owner of the horn, which is the Israfil, the angel, has put the horn to his mouth and he has taken a deep breath and he has puffed out his cheeks and he is looking at the throne about to blow into the horn. So Israfil has already gotten ready. He has taken a deep breath. He's puffed out his cheeks. He's put the horn to his mouth and he's just waiting for the order to be given for the day of judgment to begin. Ya salam. Kayfa an'am? How can I rest? My brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet told us that right after the death of Rasulullah the day of judgment would come like this. بُعِثُ أَنَا وَالسَّعَةِ هَكَذَا He said in authentic hadith in Bukhari. He said, I and the last hour has been sent like this. Meaning right after Rasulullah will come the last hour. So we know that the Prophet has passed away. All that is left is for the last hour to come. From the authentic descriptions of Israfil, is that Rasulullah told us that Israfil is an angel that doesn't blink. The only angel, the only creation that has eyes but does not blink is Israfil. And the reason why he does not blink, as in the hadith of Rasulullah Musa Imam Ahmed, is that he is afraid that if he blinks, the order would come at that point, and he would delay the blowing of the horn. This is Israfil, ya salam. The sahib al-sur, the owner of the horn, the one who is about to blow and signal the day of judgment. So my brother and Islam, when the order comes, the first blowing will happen. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ so the first blowing will happen. What happens with that? The faza. The first is called nafkhatul faza. What does that mean? The first blowing is, remember what happens when if you were to hear a very bad sound, suddenly you'd go like this. Have you ever noticed cattle, for example? They hear a very amazing doom sound, and they suddenly, you know, their ears perk up and they just listen. That's called the nafkhatul faza. First blowing is called nafkhatul faza. What does that mean? The blowing of terror. So the first blowing will terrorize all of creation. The first blowing will be so severe that the sound will terrorize all of creation. Every single being will be extremely terrorized by the first blowing. And it will stun you. It's like a stunning sound. It stuns you completely and you're completely stunned. The second blowing will happen 
And only Allah knows how long between the first and the second blowing. And the second blowing will happen which will cause destruction of this dunya. And the dunya and its destruction is amazingly described in the Qur'an. You only have to look at the surahs in Juz Amma that describe how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the day of judgment to happen and the destruction of the dunya to happen. Right? وَإِذَا دُكَّتِ الْأَرْضُ دَكَّا دَكَّا And when the earth is smashed with a complete smashing. Right? يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْجِبَالِ They ask you about the jibal. قُلْ يَنْصِفُهَا رَبِّي نَسْفَا Allah will tear it apart into half. Nasfa in half. Then what will He do? Thumma yaj'aluha qa'an saf safa. And then He will make it soft, mushy. And then in one verse He says, He will hit the mountains with each other. The mountains will become mushy and hit into each other. Because of that, they will scatter into dust and they will be lost. So four things will happen to the mountains. First, it becomes uprooted. Second, it becomes torn in half. Third, it becomes smashed with each other. And fourth, it becomes soft and mushy until a wind will blow and they will become nothing but scattered dust. What about the oceans? What will happen to them? وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ What does that mean? Imagine, ya khwati, you're going to the sea and the beach. Next time you go to the beach, just remember this. Imagine you're standing in front of the beach and the beautiful water in front of you, huge amount of water. Imagine that Allah is saying here, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ When the oceans are turned into fire. Ya salam. All of the ocean will be an ocean of fire. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ It's in the Qur'an. When the oceans are turned into fire. Subhanallah. Amazing description of the Day of Judgment. Amazing description of the Day of Judgment. وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ And when the beasts are hoarded together. What does that mean? It means the beasts under the ground and the beasts above the ground are all hoarded together. Meaning as soon as the نَفْخَةُ الْفَزَعَ happens. Have you seen any picture or any movie out there wherein for example there's a huge fire burning in the forest and all these animals running out? Have you seen that? And they're running out like crazy. There's every type of animal coming. There's a lion that comes out, a cheetah that comes out, a deer that runs out, there's a squirrel that comes out, big and large animals and small and birds. Every type of animal comes out. And that is what Allah is saying. وَإِذَا الْحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ Meaning, on that day, because of the نَفْخَةُ الْفَزَعْ What will happen is people will run towards each other and the animals and beasts will hoard towards each other. Complete chaos. Complete chaos will engulf this dunya. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا When the earth shakes with the terrible shaking. Right? When the earth shakes, وَإِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا Meaning, because of the shaking, every single thing in the belly of the earth will come out. So what comes out? What's in the belly of the earth at the moment? Squirrels, scorpions, snakes. Ya Salaam. Imagine now in front of you all creatures that are in the belly of the earth. They say that what's in the belly of the earth is almost equal to what's on top of the earth. In the number of biological creatures that actually live inside the earth. Ya Salaam. Can you imagine how many will come out? وَأَخْرَجَدِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا An insan will see what's happening around him, what's going on. That is the day of judgment. That is the promised day of judgment. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, in Surah Hajj, what does He say? يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اِتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ O mankind, fear your Lord. إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عظيم. Verily, the trembling and shaking of the day of judgment is a huge thing. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا The day when you see it, تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْدِعَةٍ أَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ Every breastfeeding woman will throw her breastfeeding child and run away. وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا And in the fear, every woman that is pregnant will start having a labor. And because of that, she will drop her load. Immediately she'll have a baby. Immediately she'll drop her load. وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا Can you imagine the fear of that day? 
that a pregnant woman will have a miscarriage and everyone that is capable of having a child will have a child on that moment of the first blowing. وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَ النَّاسَ سُكَارَا And if you were alive and looking at it on that day, you will see the people driven mad. وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَا But they're not mad. وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابُ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ Rather, it is the punishment of Allah that has driven them mad. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, the day of judgment will not come except upon the worst of people. The day of judgment will not come upon a believer. No one who is a believer will live on the day of judgment. It will come upon the worst of people. The worst of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. As worse as Pharaoh, as worse as Iblis. The worst of people. And these are the people upon whom the day of judgment will come. And what is also amazing is that all of this destruction will happen after the first blowing as quick as I can drink a half a glass of water. The Prophet said, the day of judgment will come faster than a person can drink half a glass of water. It is that quick, it is that fast, it is that swift, subhanallah. And that is exactly what will happen with someone who will live on the day of judgment to witness this. Alhamdulillah, we will not be there perhaps to witness it. Allah knows best. But inshaAllah, we will not be there to witness it. And inshaAllah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves you and me and our families from this. And no doubt, my brothers and sisters Islam, this would be a terrible thing. But whilst in the belly of the grave, imagine hearing the first sound. And the angels telling you, this is the first blowing. Then the second blowing happens. What is the second blowing? And that is the total destruction where all of creation is folded up. Everything dies, including Jibreel will die, Mikail die, every single angel will die, including the Sahib al-Sur, the blowing of the horn. Israfil will die. The last being to die will be the angel of death. And even he will die. Every single being will die. Kullu man alayha fan. Everything in this dunya will cease to exist. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Nothing will remain except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful face and the self of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. At that point, imagine when it's all blown up. Imagine when every single thing is folded up in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shout and He will say, Where are the kings today? I am the king of kings. Where are the people of pride today? I am the king of the dunya. And the Sahaba told us in authentic narration from Rasulullah that the amount of time between the second blowing and the third blowing is 40. We don't know if it's 40 days, 40 hours, 40 weeks, 40 months, 40 years, or 40,000 years. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So as long as Allah wills, will be the duration between the second blowing and the third blowing. And then Allah will recreate Israfil. And he will recreate the horn, and then he will tell Israfil to blow, and Israfil will blow, which will signal the start of the Day of Judgment.